Good afternoon, and welcome to the special meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. It is October 31st, 2013. Can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Sterhovanesian? Uh, here. Pavanian? Here. Lee? Here. Sharikian is absent. Chairperson Deaver? Here. The agenda for the October 31st meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on October 25th, 2013. Next item. Item two, consent items at A, approval of minute, meeting minutes from September 19th, 2013. Comments or motion? Stephen? I'll make a motion to accept. And I'll second it. Roll call. Commissioner Serhovanesia? Yes. Ivanian? Abstain. Lee? Yes. Shurikian is absent. Chairperson Deaver? Yes. Next item. <laughs> item three, introductions and presentations at A, library, arts and culture events, presented by Chuck Wyke, Community Relations Manager. Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson Deaver, Commissioners, uh, City Staff. I'm Chuck Wyke, Library Community Relations Manager. Unless on Halloween today I'm his evil shape sh shifter twin. <laughs> I've got a few slides to show you, um, mostly about things that have gone on that relate to the arts specifically. Uh, we, we at the Library Arts and Culture Department participated in uh, the Big Draw LA. It's actually a nationwide drawing event, so for a couple of weeks, we just encourage people uh, to walk into all of our locations, pick up a crayon or a uh, a marker and start drawing. We had stations where you could draw and we've got a lot of great big uh, pictures. Um, we started off with an out, outdoor chalk event for little kids. Uh, there's some of the, the things we've done. Those are teens, I believe. Uh, and we've got some pa more panels up. The stuff's on display. It, it really looks good. A variety of, of pictures. Um, we even had a comic book put together a demonstration. Uh, we had a number of uh, artists who work in uh, Warner's and Nickelodeon and so forth, and they came in for a, a couple of really good uh, community workshops uh, where they walked uh, parents, teens, kids through comic book making. Uh, we now have a 40-page cartoon with a real nice beginning, middle, and end uh, that I hope to share with you uh, on PDF. Uh, it's called Touch and Go, Adventures at the Library. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll have to bring one of those in for you. Um, in November, starting the 5th of November, this bear, and of course Glendale's rather uh, notorious for its bear population uh, <laughs> or visitors, uh, this bear is called Otto the Book Bear. His story is he lives in a book, uh, and uh, late at night he comes out and walks around. It's written by a British author named Katie Clemenson. And what we're going to do is take the pages of the book, put them on big placards up in Montrose on Honolulu, and you'll be able to view the entire story from beginning to end. You start at Verdugo, walk down Honolulu on the north side to the library, uh, and read the book. Great for kids. Uh, of course, but then we've got a couple of events at the library. You can you can name your favorite bear. Uh, you can uh, you know a, a lot of bear bear shenanigans uh, at the Montrose Library, and that's uh, starts on the fifth of November, runs the entire month, rain or shine, free to the public. It's open day and night. Our one book one Glendale program is very popular, uh, not just for adults but for children or younger adults. Uh, this year we have a, a local author, Kathleen O'Dell. She's written a mystery called The Aviary. It's spooky, uh, and she's coming to the library in the middle of the month. Um, I'm going to end here with some brand library information. Uh, this is what the, the front steps look like now. We've got some yeah, much-needed banisters or the railings going up to the front. Um, you can see some really nice lighting that's, and, a, and even a sign that, by golly, says Brand Library Art Galleries. Um, that's, that's the entrance. Basically, the entrance to the entire library is going to be in this, this end here. Some of the inside shots, again, beautiful. Uh, there's so much they found and restored 
there. It's, it's a, a wonderful looking facility, but I think we're going to be better off uh, as a functioning library also. Final shot. Um, I want to remind you to tell your friends and neighbors, uh, your artists, friends, curators, that submissions for the 2014 exhibitions are due the middle of November. Uh, is it the 15th? 15th of November. Uh, you can find the information online. You can call at any library site, and we'll, we'll gladly uh, get that information to you. Um, we've, we've received quite a few uh, submission. So we're, we're expecting a lot to kind of come in the last week or so. More art and music news. The Associates of Brand Library are going to hold a, an art and music sale Saturday, November 16. If you're a member of the Associates or the Friends of the Library, you get in at 9 a.m. Uh, general public gets in at 10 and it runs till 4 o'clock. This is in our auditorium. We are expecting a lot of people, and, and there's, they're pricing books uh, the last few weeks. It's going to be great. So a little more information about that. Um, that's about it for the library. I've, I've given you uh, a handout for a brand library, um, a handout that's our November adult and teen events. It includes uh, also the story walk. Uh, and I've given you the newsletters for the Friends of the Library and the Associates of Brand Library. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Welcome. Next item. Next item is item four, oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not on this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The commission may refer the matter to city staff for investigation and report. Okay. And I have one card for De Keimbold. If you would come to the front, please. Nice to be here again. Chairman Deaver, uh, commissioners, um, and uh, Annette. By the way, the Glendale Art Association wishes you much happiness, as you set off in your married journey. Uh, I just have a, a quick announcement. On December 15th, we're having a holiday salon art festival in Eagle Rock at the Center for uh, Center for Fine Arts, I guess. Center for? Center for the Arts. arts. Just for the Arts. Center for the Arts, Eagle Rock. Yeah. C-F-A-E-R. It's going to be in the afternoon, uh, 1 to 5. We will be there four days, and we'll have a closing reception where artists can come in and demonstrate. So it should be very nice. We're going to have a string quartet, food, beverages, and uh, all kinds of media. Probably have a few neon artists again with us. So uh, we'll send you announcements uh, by, by email and uh, look forward to seeing you. The, the other thing is uh, we're preparing a, a proposal for the uh, RFP responses for the uh, Grand Library and think it's a great idea and appreciate that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Great. Next item. Item 5, Business Agenda A, Action Items at 1, Review and Approve Performance Series Guidelines. Thank you. Um, in uh, September, uh, we presented the Arts and Culture Commission's two-year work plan to the City Council, and they approved the two-year work plan with some recommendations um, and uh, recommended changes uh, to the work plan and some of the programming. One of those programs was the uh, performance series at Brand Library. The Council requested that the Commission consider expanding the program citywide um, to encourage um, expanding existing uh, programming that's going on as well as to expand beyond just music and include all types of performances um, and staff has uh, looked at the original proposal in the budget and we've been able to come up with a, a program proposal that can um, encompass um, both what the commission wanted as well as some of the um, city council's recommendations given the budget that we had um, so I'll quickly just go over what the program is um, Essentially, the goal of the program is to, uh, to provide a free cultural asset to residents and visitors 
course, we'd like to support existing artists and performers in our community, but we also want to attract new artists and performers. We want people to come to our city and to really um, see all the cultural opportunities that we have. Um, as mentioned, one of the first focus areas was Brand Library and Art Center, and we had focus on the reopening year um, to encourage people and activity um, up at Brand. Um, the other focus area is uh, to expand existing performances in the city, but to bring in some new um, programs, and these would serve more of like pop-up performances, um, you know, through the two-year period of our work plan, um, anywhere in the city as long as it's publicly accessible. Um, for the um, performances, uh, the commission would fund between 500 and 1,000 per artist um, or performance group, uh, up to 15 um, grants um, per focus area. Um, and that we could do that with a budget of $20,000, and it can be a really robust uh, public performance uh, program. Um, just to give you some more details of what it would look like up at Brand um, Library and Art Center, uh, the performances would be scheduled in spring and summer um, to coincide with the opening. We're looking at the calendar at Brand Library and Art Center so it would fit into some of the other programming that's happening there. We want them uh, to be complementary. Uh, and these would take place Sunday afternoons um, in the springtime and then Friday evening um, in June, July, and we're looking at maybe August. Um, months and this would be uh, we're hoping a weekly basis people would know that they could come and enjoy free um, music and public performances in the plaza area um, just to give you um, an idea of how many people can be accommodated on the plaza it's about 75 to 100 people but based on amplification you know people in the park could even set up a picnic and enjoy it um, sitting in the grassy area so uh, we anticipate that it's going to really bring a lot of people up there and it really you know, um, uh, create some excitement um, in the opening year. Um, the second um, is citywide. Uh, these could be scheduled, um, you know, you know, I'm very ambitious saying it can start as early as January, but just depending on how quickly uh, this gets approved. But uh, it would, uh, these could take place anywhere uh, from the date that we actually select the artist through June 2015, which is um, uh, the span of our work plan. This would um, be to encourage existing free public performances. There are a lot of um, organizations and artist groups that do, um, you know, free um, uh, music performances during during lunchtime. We want to encourage that activity to continue. We want to help them expand that. But we also want to encourage um, artists and, and performance groups to think creatively of public spaces, whether it's publicly owned or it's privately owned public space, um, and to do performances there. So this could incru include, you know, drama, opera, um, some sort of performance art to actual music, and um, we're open to proposals. Again, um, they are going to all be be uh, free and publicly accessible, and that's uh, one of the responsibilities from the artist and the performer. Of course, we know Brand Library and Art Center Plaza meets those requirements. Um, so what we're uh, asking of um, submittals or proposals for other areas that the that the artist and the and the performer um, ensure that uh, the space uh, is publicly accessible um, for the community, that they have to be free. Um, the artist and performer is also going to be responsible for helping market and publicizing these performances through their appropriate networks. Of course, the city's going to undertake some of that responsibility too, but it's really about a partnership to, uh, to maximize the number of uh, people that come and enjoy this. And I'm sure everyone's favorite topic is insurance requirements. Uh, the selected artists and performers will need to uh, comply, but it's very simple and it's not going to be as complicated as other processes. And this is something that could be paid through the stipend that they are given through the 500 or 1,000. Um, doing initial outreach, a lot of artists and artist groups that already do public performances have the necessary insurance. They've done this type of uh, work before, so it's not going to be a, a shock, but I just want to put it out there so that um, people know that it is something that we will require, but of course uh, we're happy to work with them um, to, to make sure that uh, everything's um, settled. So um, the selection process uh, for this, um, because we 
quickly want to make selections. Um, we're going to uh, review proposals, and, the, and as of right now, um, you know, staff's recommendation is to have uh, the selection be made by um, Arts and Culture Commission and Brand Library and Art Center staff, so we can quickly review those proposals, make sure whatever the proposal it is coincides with some of the programming that's happening at Brand Library, but also looking at um, overall what's happening at the city to make sure we're scheduling performances that we can discuss that. Um, obviously, we're going to be looking at the quality of art and or, or the performance, um, whether it's appropriate for our community. And of course, we want to encourage a mix of performance styles, artists, and programming opportunities. And again, the site selection um, access. So we want to ensure that um, any uh, locations that are proposed beyond Brand Library and Art Center um, are, are safe and they are accessible publicly. And uh, that uh, concludes the overview. Um, the re uh, recommendation is to approve the guidelines and application as presented. The next step would be um, to uh, present this to council for their review. And as soon as um, it's approved, then we can um, proceed to issuing the, the open call for proposals and to make the selection. Um, staff's goal is to make selections um, and finalize dates, um, at least for Brand Library, by early January. Um, since Brand Library and Art Center is scheduled to open in the springtime, we'd really like to have uh, the uh, year's worth of events already scheduled and planned and um, in a calendar so people know what to expect. Um, so it is an ambitious uh, a schedule, but um, I know we can do it, especially uh, depending on the staff that we have reviewing it. Question. Um, now, is this going to be the Art and Culture Commission's kind of activity, or is it brands, or is it joint? And staff, do we have enough people to be able to schedule all these events and calendar them, and etc., the way it's being done already with brand? No, this is going to be an Arts and Culture Commission um, program. Um, it's just uh, in partnership with uh, the Brand Library and Arts Center. Uh, that's uh, the one um, part, but it is an Arts and Culture Commission project. And the staff of the Brand Library are going to do the scheduling, or it's going to be our staff? Um, your staff is going to be working with the Brand Library and Art Center staff to just make sure that, uh, you know, if we are scheduling something at Brand, uh, it, it it doesn't overlap with another event that's already scheduled there. It's mostly just the, the logistics to make sure that we're scheduling um, events at appropriate times of the year, uh, things that require a lot of community interaction. We don't want to schedule when there might be rain uh, outside, for example. So it's just mostly logistics at this point. Uh, next question. Uh, the, the, the scope and the uh, texture, that means whatever is being selected, is it, going to be, is it going to come and report it to the commission or it's going to be taken care of only by the staff? No, we will pro uh, provide a report back okay. to the commission. Thank you. If the commission uh, chooses to have a report back, we're happy to do that. Absolutely. If it's Art and Culture Commission event, naturally it needs to be reported to the commission. If it's not, then that's a different story. Other comments, questions? Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to see this finally come in front of us. Um, I applaud staff and uh, city council for, for making this a swift uh, decision and bringing it back to us. Um, in terms of the amount of money, uh, let's say, for example, if a let's say a, a performance group, for example, um, proposes some kind of, let's say, multi-concert series, uh, would they then therefore, uh, let's say it's a three-concert series, right? And if they get 1,000 per performance group, let's say, for example, then they would get 3,000? Is that what it is? Is that a possibility? Is that... It is a possibility, depending on the, the proposals we get. We want to, as, as mentioned, we want to get as much diversity as possible. There are some performance groups that could do three performances with $1,000, so that's something that we're looking at. We'd like to um, award as many different artists and performers um, as possible. So uh, my recommendation would be for any interested uh, artists or artist groups is to stay within those budgets and, and not go beyond it because we want to award as many different um, 
funds that we can. And if I might ask, uh, the way that I read it mm -hmm. as well, you can confirm, is that if a group is established enough to be having multiple ser a series, that this might be one uh, funder of that series that it maybe helps get them uh, get them started or puts them over the top in terms of their budget. And uh, so a secondary question: What if you have, let's say, one group that, let's say, for example, a performance for them, if their group is large enough, I'm thinking classical music, obviously, if they're playing in a chamber music, uh, let's say, uh, size, uh, and they, they have, let's say, uh, 15 players, and that would require a lot more than $1,000 to pay anybody, quite frankly. Let's say they, they came up with an idea of performing even just one concert for, let's say, $10,000. Would that be out of the question? I would say yes, because this is the first year that we're doing this program. We want to have as many, um, you know, as I said, we want to be able to fund up to 15 different groups uh, and performances. So, um, you know, maybe in future years when we have a lot more discretionary funding, that's a possibility. But I, in this first year, we want to get as many as th 30 different uh, performances. So basically the first year is going to be more introducing artists, young artists in the community and etc. Uh, rather than having a famous group or a group that is a kind of a better known because to have a group of uh, let's say a chamber music something that they are quite well known to the community that would uh, require that amount of money. So maybe that way not to disappoint we could say that the first year or the first plan or the two years we are going to go with the introductory kind of a performances and then in the future to plan for bigger or better known um, artists um i don't think we have to put that type of limit because there are a uh bigger name um, performers that uh, have performed at other cities that are on the LA County uh, Commission's um, Arts Commission's list that do performances at other cities that pay out the same amount that we do. So um, we, we're, we're encouraging um, you know, new and emerging artists, but we definitely want some of those established artists um, to be able to come in. So I think we want to leave it open, but we want to uh, give out as many different, I don't want to call it a grant, but we want to fund as many different um, uh, performances as possible. So if there's a proposal for, you know, $10,000, you know, we're, we're likely not going to fund that. We'd much rather do 10 $1,000 performances just to be able to have more activity. Okay. My, my initial thought with that is that uh, with the amount of money, sometimes there has to be a quality, a sacrifice of quality. Um, that may or may not be the case. Uh, however, that is an issue in the back of my mind. Secondly, is there, is there going to be any kind of preferential treatment that we give to Glenda local artists? We haven't um, put any, um, um, you know, percentages like we did in some of our, um, our other RFPs. If the commission uh, wishes, we can say 20%, which is consistent with some of our other um, proposals, that uh, we can make that a, a threshold that will ensure that 20% um, of the artists selected are, are Glendale-based artists. If that is something that the commission would like to include, I can make that change. Is that something you're putting I'm, I, on the floor there? I, 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 well, indirectly, yes. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if 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 I want if 20% is the right number or 50% or some. It's, it's something arbitrary for me. Um, I I don't know if I can, in my mind, think of any kind of percent that would make me, let's say, quote unquote, happy with anything. But um, it's it, it is something that I. Because if we're going to if we're going to bring local artists, it, our emphasis with I think this whole work plan has been local, 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 and then and then if we, and what triggered that was the fact that you mentioned the you know that there's artists on the L A, L A R you know commissions uh, you know list of things yeah but where the focus I, I I I would think is that it is Glendale that is the focus so it, it's not about a hundred percent either but mm -hmm. that's what that's the way i see it i think that it is about the local it's about it is about funding the local artists i might say the, the la county it's there it's the county commission so i think being on that list doesn't preclude that they are or not from glendale there, to there the are glendale right. artists that are on that list yeah. so it, it's just a, sure. once you know an artist if they're on that list they've gone through this process before it just gives us an idea have they ever 
worked with the city before? Have they ever gone through a process? Do they understand what they're getting into as opposed to a first-time artist? It's not to say that somebody who was not on that list is precluded. It just gives us an idea of if they have experience working in this type of an environment, and we want to obviously have a balance. If you'd like, under the um, selection process, we can add some language, you know, uh, you know, uh, preference may be given to Glendale artists if you're, if you don't want to give a specific percentage, are we, can we do that? Um, on the guidelines we can say, you know, preference may be given to, um, to Glendale artists if all things equal or we'll come up with a specific language to add I in think, there. I think I would be very happy with that exact wording. Uh, instead of giving it a specific percentage, <laughs> just to say that there will be preferential treatment given to Glendale local artists. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, quite frankly, as a performer, I, I actually never worked with the city before. So what I would also like to just mention, and this have, does not have to go into this, but to b make it an enjoyable experience for the artist, because working with the city is not what artists do well. We don't understand the bureau bureaucracy of it all, and uh, we're, uh, we, we, we do forget things like, oh, uh, you know, uh, is the stair leading up to the stage going to be three inches, you know, per stair? We, we don't we don't think of things in that regard. So just as a side note, make this an enjoyable process for the artists, please. <laughs> We're trying to make it enjoyable for everybody involved, <laughs> even the bureaucrats. That, 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 uh, right. Well, th that wasn't uh, you know a, a, a direct hit on anybody, but you know I, I just no, of course. you know. I, I think it's necessary just for me to even just say that. So. Before you, you might have more comments, but I just wanted to, to, to query on the, the preference component. So I heard that from, from Commissioner Kivanian, and I just want to find out if there's consensus on having the generalized preference for Glendale artists as part of the, the selection criteria that we're uh, looking at. Yeah, I would like to say that I really like the idea of preference because basically we are representing the artists in our community and we are there to support them. A preference does not limit us, but it also shows our focus because meanwhile we would like to have artists from elsewhere because we want to bring other people to City of Glendale as well. We want to have performances that people, visitors come and they visit our restaurants, they come to our stores, they do a lot of different, you know, as far as the economic support of what happens in the city, we need uh, outsiders here as well, but it sounds very good to have preferential treatment and <laughs> preference to Glendale artists because that's why we are here to support them. Let me, let me throw this out there just to ask the question. So if you had, and I'm not, this isn't the actual math of it, but if you had 10 available slots and you had 10 artists from Glendale then 10 artists from outside of Glendale that were equally um, appropriate, then it would all go to Glendale. And are you okay with it? Because I'm also hearing is that bringing in artists from the outside would be, would be important. So would that be more like a 50-50% or do you just want to keep it as a preference in well, general? Then we'll go with the quality of what being, is being presented, kind of. Then we would have kind of a choice, but we would have more tendency or more inclination towards the Glendale. But nonetheless, we are not going to exclude, even though there are 10 Glendale artists and 10 outside, we are not going to exclude the outside uh, artists as well. It's very hard to say, to put a percentage. I know that yeah. if you don't put any percentage, it's hard to decide. But you know, more or less when a decision is being made, well, maybe 40, 60 percent, maybe. And in some cases, it could be reversed based on the quality of what we are offering to our community. Because our aim is also to educate our community as well by the presentations that we are choosing or allowing to have in our community. Mr. Grant, do you? Well, the, um, Chair Deaver and members, um, there are many ways to do this. I mean, you can even assign points. In, during the evaluation, you know, when you have quality, you know, zero to five points, certainly, you know, uh, points can be given um, to a Glendale uh, performer or musician, and, and you can do it that way. There's many ways to do it. So uh, that way, you know, uh, in, in the long run, you can evaluate um, and select uh, local ones. So just, just to clarify, so if we are leaving it, I just want to make sure there's consensus on it. So if we're leaving it just as a preference may be given as part of the criteria, then we could decide later exactly what that criteria will be in terms of 
of, of yes. scoring. Yes, that's correct. Because right. uh, as what I what I hear is we definitely want to encourage um, and nurture our existing and our local artists, but we don't want to preclude artists from outside uh, of our city because we want to encourage people to come. So that's why I think you know we can say preference may be given to Glendale artists, and then when it comes to the scoring process, we'll work with uh, with Mr. Gr Mr. Grant to come up with what that is so that. If we have equal numbers that we're, we're again fair and we're, we're meeting the commission's wishes. So it's kind of like a rubric. There would be a rubric on evaluating how things are going to be chosen. So there must be a bigger number for those who are local as far as local. But when the other items come in, the other ones can kind of balance it out. Huh? Is, that, is that how basically we are planning to do it? Again, you'll be working with staff, but I mean, and again, that is one way of doing it and assigning a point value. Again, you know, the commission, um, you know, we can come back and we can discuss, you know, how you want to evaluate this, and, and staff can, you know, um, you know, present a report to you. Just to mention, because I know that Parks and Rec used to do that. When they have for their parks different artwork chosen, there's a rubric created already, which we could go back to it or we can modify it, which gives kind of a balance of. Um, what they are representing and their location and what, what community they are representing also was very famous. So we could use those two as well. Anyhow, just to and mention that, that it is, is we have some of those already created by our curators. Is this something that the commission wants staff to bring back or can staff take direction from the, uh, from the commission and develop something and begin implementation? I mean, I would like before, to wait, before we, we oh. answer that question. I want to go to Commissioner Lee. Had a, a had an input. There's uh, two terminology being used right now. One it says maybe given preference or will be given preference. I think I would prefer will be given well. preference instead of maybe, because I think the terminology you mentioned said maybe, and and Chair Deaver said maybe. I think it was will. So, well, well when you say will be, for example, uh, uh, Chair Deaver brought up the example. If we have 10 slots and we have uh, 10 proposals from Glendale artists and 10 from um, outside of Glendale, then all 10 of those slots would be given to the Glendale artists if we uh, say uh, preference will be given to Glendale artists. But if we say may be given, then uh, staff can determine that appropriate number, whether it's 50-50, 60-40, or if we decide all 10 goes to the local ar uh, to local artists. So may be given gives us that flexibility, so we're not limited to 20%, 50%, or 100%. Um, well, in that case, I would prefer if it comes to the commission again on uh, the whatever rubrics is being presented or whatever is being decided because I do believe that it is our job to make sure that we are very much into uh, how things are being uh, presented and how things are being decided. Personally, that's my choice. Commissioner Kamania. Is there going to be any commissioner input that's what in, 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 the pr in the process before it comes to the commission for finalizing it? Is, is that something that's out of the question? Is it something we've thought about? I mean, it, it's not. It's absolutely not out of the question. If commission, um, the one of the reasons um, you know was not listed in the report is the commission. There's going to be a different commissioner reviewing, um, you know, for five other uh, program proposals. And given the uh, the quick turnaround for this program, um, you know, I thought this was the easiest and the least amount of money this could be handled by staff. But if a commissioner wants to be involved. In the selection process, we can absolutely include a commissioner. Um, but I, I, again, I want to remind that for this program, this is something that, again, even the council wanted us to be able to have uh, quickly implemented, so we can include in the um, the calendar for Brand Library and Art Center. Um, if a commissioner wants to be involved, I would recommend that whoever that commissioner is, is serves as a representative of the commission and helps us develop that rubric, um, and then we begin implementation rather than coming back to the commission. But if uh, the commission wants to go over what that rubric is, we can bring that back. But um, it's going to give us a very, yeah. very short turnaround that's, time. Yeah. And actually, that, that's exactly why instead of having to bring it back to the commission for us to review it again and then go, you know reinvent the wheel, essentially, I, I think it, I'm suggesting to my colleagues as well that we do put uh, one of us volunteers to be uh, you know on that uh, panel, that selection panel, and represent. The commission, so that it doesn't have. So then, when it comes back to us, it's basically just read through here the results, and then it's done. So there's no there's no real input anymore. 
So let me ask the question. So is it how we prepare the rubrics that one of the commissioners would be part of or part of the selection of the, selection. the 10 and 10 whatever right. number? The, the selection. Um, and that may include a rubrics or it may not. It's right. they're part of the process yeah. so that we don't have to stall up by micromanaging it at this exactly. level. Exactly. So if a commissioner is, is a volunteers or is selected, then that commissioner would work with staff to develop that, that criteria even more. Because, you know, anytime you do a selection, uh, you know, it's appropriate to have some sort of rubric that we that we fill out. So the commissioner would uh, would work with staff to develop that and make the selection of the performers and the artists. Uh, and, and I just, I have a procedural question. If we were to go this route and, ha and have somebody volunteer, do it, can we do that in this area? It's, it's because it's, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, if we are selecting for different performances, each one of us um, is kind of inclined or has, um, is trained or has kind of a special affinity with certain form of performances. So we are not all equally well balanced in that area. That's why I was thinking that when we want to choose or select different uh, uh, presentations, it would have been, it's hard to say if one of us could represent all the different form of performances that are, are going to be selected. So to be more precise, to do a better job, to represent the community, to represent the council members who have appointed, somehow I don't know how we could come up with a right answer for that. I don't have the answer, but I do um, want to make sure, let's say if something is in the musical arena, Assumingly, of course, the best choice, the person who would be selecting would be uh, Commissioner Kevanyan, for example, you know, or different areas. So um, how, do, how are we going to do that? How, what do we envision? What are our rights? How does it work? I, I, I think what staff's recommendation to address that is, unfortunately, you know, not every commissioner can be involved at every step of the process, um, and it's uh, necessarily something that's even required of you. Uh, um, it's usually fall, the burden falls on staff, but what we've done is to ensure that the commission is involved in the decision-making process. Um, we, what, I, what staff has incorporated in each one of these selection processes, whether for all of these programs, is that a commissioner is voted to be part of that selection process. So um, every single one of our projects is gonna have a different commissioner. And of course, each commissioner, you know, has different preferences, but that's what adds variety to the selection. And, you know, it, it, adds, uh, it adds variety into the selection. So I, I believe that that's a, that's a good way to, to proceed because if we were to go through and bring things back to the commission, we would never get to the implementation part. And I know we're all anxious to get to implementation. So. Uh, that's the recommendation is for every single project uh, and for consultant selection, there's going to be a commissioner involved in that decision process. So you are going to be uh, representing the commission's interests um, and you will be able to make that decision. So I would like that clarification that in case, let's say, if there are different performances, based on the performances, the selection within each perform different kind of performances presented a different commissioner could participate one in that event, correct? I, I, um, I, no, I think for each project. So for for this public I mean, for this public performances, there would be one commissioner. So whether uh, this commissioner is voting on a music performance, theater, drama, opera, that one commissioner is going to make decisions for this particular project. For the art and vacant storefronts uh, consultant project, that's a different commissioner helping in that selection process. Because that way it'll help things move um, move quickly, and you'll still have uh, the opportunity to participate in that decision making process. I have to see how it works. Somehow I'm not very comfortable with it, but I maybe it's the best way to do. Uh, it's just I want to make sure that uh, the quality choice, because we are representing also the quality choice of what is being decided for the, uh, any event that happens in the area of art and culture. I know that staff, their job is to implement it, to take care of it, to go through the procedures, but um, what is being decided, I want to be a little bit more careful in what we are selecting and who is being selected. But uh, that has to go with whatever my colleagues uh, eventually want to decide on. 
So if in order to keep the process moving forward, um, it needs to go to, we, we need to approve something here and it needs to go to council. But the, so that's going to take at least a, a month and a half or so. There's nothing that keeps us from, say, from a December meeting. Bef you can still issue a, a call and we can figure out who from the commission might be participating with staff in the selection, which we could do in, say, December, correct? Correct. And, okay. Correct. So if, as quickly as we're able to take these items to the to the council, we can it, we we don't have to have the the rubric defined during the call for artists. So we do have time. And um, just as as a reminder, um, you know, I feel like you know I'm constantly harping with you. Just to remind that the council doesn't want the commission involved in programming. It's again at the larger policy uh, dis decision. So decisions that are made here. So when it comes down to like specifics, you know, does this program happen on this day and all of that? The council doesn't want the commission. Involved in that, they want staff to focus on that, so the commission can work on the policy um, side of the, this programming. So, um, the, uh, my recommendation would be: uh, I, I um, ha can include the the um, addition of the preference maybe given to Glendale artists under the selection process, and at the next month's meeting, we can decide which commissioner is going to um, um, sit in on the. Um, the selection process for, you know, at that point it'll be four different RFPs or call for artists process. So you can start to think about which uh, project interests you and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, and I, I just want to ensure that, uh, find out if there were other comments with regard to the content of what we're approving and, and Commissioner Kevanian, you had a... I, I, was, I was simply going to approve uh, uh, that, that, I was going to make a motion, excuse me. I wish I could just approve it. It would be done and over with. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion with the changes that staff just mentioned. We have a second? I'll, I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Sterhovanesian? Abstain. Kevanian? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jerikian Sapson? Chairperson Deaver? Yes. And next item, please. 5A2, Review and Approve Temporary Exhibitions in Public Spaces, RFP. As promised, uh, this is uh, the scope of work and um, a draft of the request for proposals for another one of the priority projects for the uh, commission. Uh, this is temporary exhibitions in public spaces. So you recall the Art and Vacant Storefronts program is designed to turn vacant spaces into temporary galleries or installations or uh, display windows. This program is about, um, you know, creating uh, temporary art exhibitions to enliven public spaces. Again, this could be city-owned, um, you know, public spaces, a, a plaza, for example, at City Hall, or um, a, a privately owned um, plaza um, that is open and publicly accessible. Um, this is a program is, is, we're, is we're very flexible. We're looking for the right consultant to come in and help, uh, you know, create some um, vision or theme to it. But, um, you know, it's open to, you know, placing existing loaned or even commissioned site-specific um, sculptures or other temporary artworks um, for public view. Uh, the goal would be to rotate these exhibitions and spaces throughout the program year, um, and uh, the consultant will be given a budget of $60,000, and that includes everything from, you know, if they're uh, doing any marketing to insurance to the consultant fees and to even commissioning any artworks. Um, we um, are um, asking for a lot out of our consultant, and uh, just to reiterate, um, a lot of the um, requirements for all of these are, are consistent. I've made sure that any consultant we hire, we're, we're going through a similar selection process. We're requiring um, similar information, just so there isn't confusion, and if anybody's interested in submitting, then they know exactly what to expect um, the city. Um, the consultant will be responsible for developing a brand identity and program concept. Um, you know, we definitely want to be able to create a program that's um, specific to Glendale and we'd like to get proposals from consultants. The uh, uh, consultant will all also be responsible for doing uh, the, select, the call for artists and selecting artists and curating and also finding locations and spaces. Of course, city staff will be happy to work with the consultant to identify some city-owned um, public spaces that are um, suitable for this type of program, but we want the consultant to get creative with other types of spaces throughout 
throughout the city. And uh, they will also be responsible for the exhibition um, installation setup and cleanup, administrating, um, administering um, and managing the program, the program budget, changing out and rotating the exhibitions, um, as well as promoting and marketing the programs and all their ongoing communications. We really want, if the program, for example, takes place in the downtown area, we'd love for this consultant to be able to work with a consultant that's, uh, for example, working on the Art and Bacon Storefronts program, as well as with the Downtown Glendale Association, so that we create some synergy. And, um, you know, city staff will work to ensure that. And, of course, we uh, will want the consultant to provide reports to the commission. You know, when they issue a call for artists and make selections, you know, how many artists submitted a proposal? How many did they select? How many are Glendale artists? How many locations are they looking at? How many people came to, for example, an event if they do host an event? So we want this information. Of course, it helps us, um, you know, keep tabs on the program, but it also lets us know how much activity um, is created out of these different programs. Um, you know, art as an economic economic development tool, something important to the council, and these reports will help us get that information. Uh, the review and evaluation um, is very uh, similar to the um, uh, one from last month that we presented for Art and Vacant Storefronts program. We're looking at two different focus areas. Of course, the firm's uh, qualifications and experience. We want somebody who's not only worked with similar scope of work, but they've been successful at it. They know how to manage temporary installations in public spaces. They understand the process. That they also understand marketing and promotion. Uh, we want anybody who's doing a program in Glenda to be able to tell everybody about it and to be able to sell the idea of Glendale as an arts and cultural destination. We also want um, you know, quality submittals. We want to uh, somebody who's responsible, who's going to be able to manage this program for the commission um, in a great way and that they understand what we're requiring of them. Um, and just to remind, uh, reiterate, a commissioner will be um, involved in the selection of the consultant, and we will select that uh, commissioner next month. Um, if there are no uh, you know, changes, again, uh, staff recommends uh, the commission approve the scope of work. The draft RFP is presented, and the next step will be to take it to council for their approval before we um, issue the, um, the RFP. Commissioner Lee. The only thing I'm not too happy with right now is I'm seeing everything that we're going to be spending money on is dealing with consultants. I mean, I, I, I have utmost confidence in the staff that they should be able to manage a lot of these products in-house. I mean, I, I know it's time-consuming, but it maybe bring on with this type of funding to bring on more staffing to be able to do it in-house. And the reason why I have a preference for that is because it makes the event or functions an actual city function. It's done by city staff. It's not done by an outside consultant, somebody bringing in new ideas. Staff, I think, have the capability to see and to absorb everything that needs to be done. And that, that, that would be my preference, because then we're, we're not outsourcing everything out, having somebody else come in and, and tell our community, hey, these are the better locations, instead of somebody who's in-house already, who's already familiar with the territory and can get more ideas or brainstorm and come out with better uh, ideas than an outside consultant can come up with. Um, that that's my first you know inclination to this because like I said I, every one of these projects all deal with you know big bucks for consultants in the sense um, you know I, I'd prefer it if we can generate it more toward in-house to be able to fund these the projects that's what my preference would be well, I appreciate your confidence in staff uh, to be able to manage these, but when we were discussing our work plan, I think one of the, the discussions we had was um, staff's workload. Um, given the robust uh, programming that you want, uh, staff can't. 
uh, you know, I cannot manage and oversee all aspects of every single project. And that was one of the drawbacks, is if we wanted more uh, programming, then it was going to have to be, um, you know, consultant managed. Of course, in partnership and collaboration with, with city staff. Um, I want uh, you all to, to be confident whether we hire a consultant, um, whatever consultant we hire, it is still going to be a city program, and it will be an arts and culture commission program. Uh, we're not just going to be um, handing over a check and having a consultant come up with a vision. They're going to be working with the commission as, and staff. They're just going to be doing a lot of the work that staff uh, doesn't have the capacity to do at this point. In future years, it might change, but in this first year, given the number of programs and projects you want to do, it, it, we can't do it in-house. So the, the consultant will work uh, with me and for the commission to be able to deliver that vision. I might add to that, I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the funding for this pro these programs through the Urban Art Fund cannot be utilized to have additional staff correct. to make it possible. So we don't have the funding for additional staff hours to work it. But I, you know, just from uh, the other end, too, I, sometimes using the word consultant, I think, has a certain connotation. But I think if we think about it as artists, arts organizations, cultural organizations that do this as part of their what they do, and even consultants that come from that world, World that just have maybe more contacts and a different uh, perspective than our internal staff might have, and so that working together, we might, in the end, have something that we wouldn't have thought about internally. And the consultant is a very bureaucratic word, so I apologize. So, you know, the uh, consultant that's hired for this could be an art organization. It could be a group of artists that's able to do this. So uh, it's a matter of them uh, managing and being able to do this work. So when we say consultant, you know, I want you to, uh, it's, it's somebody that's an expert in this specific field, but they're going to be working to develop a commission project or a program. Because the terminology then I would like would be collaboration. We find a partner, not a consultant. And then that makes a difference, because right now we're we're just hiring somebody to get all all this information for us. We're not doing a joint project, and if if we're looking at doing a joint project, then that's what I would prefer, because for example, you know, our, you know, brand brand associates, any any of the organizations we can partner up with, because then what they will be putting into the table is their time and effort too. We'll help fund the project, but they will be putting in to make it a more successful event or a product. Is it? I have a question actually for Mr. Mr. Grant. In terms of terminology, um, because any any uh, respondent would have to be under a, a contract with the city over a I don't know what the, the terminology would be for that, but is there different terminology that can be utilized besides consultant, or is that standard city language for the contract? Standard language for the contract, but I mean, we could look into, I mean, it would, you know, partnership collaborator, I mean, you know, contract with somebody who's, who's essentially still the function of a consultant, mm -hmm. but has a different name or title to it. So, I mean, that, that is a possibility. We could work with that, but generally the standard, the standard, the standard in the city would be a consultant, whether you know it's an architect, engineer, or in this case, somebody who's an expert in bringing artists to the community to fill the storefronts. So, if in the RFP, if we wanted soft, more inclusive language that reflected more of the the vision of it, we could do something like a, a, you know, requesting proposals from for collaborators or partners, maybe in quotations, consultant, something like that, that would then reflect what would be in the ultimate contract. Um, just throwing it out there. I don't know how, what other commissioners. What about, about collaborating or, consulting firm? Or because again, if it shows that the consulting firm is not going to do everything on their own, it is going to be in collaboration. Collaboration would, would that work if it's a collaborating consulting firm or collaborating consultant that would kind of identify that the will and wish of the city and the commission is um, implemented? Um, we can look into um, if that's the commission's wish. Um, I'm just looking through where we've. I think um, in the opening line we say that we're accepting proposals from qualified art installation consultant teams. We can, um, you know, art installation collaborative uh, partnership or something. I mean, we can add uh, if. Uh, 
unless uh, we're required to get specific language. If not, then um, when before I sh uh, sending this to the council, then I can come up with the right terminology. But we would again use quotation consultant just so people understand uh, that we are that they are going to be retained. It's not just uh, they are going to have to go through the contractual process. Um, so I think uh, we can find a good. Um, medium between collaborative partner and consultant and just make it absolutely clear that they're going to be partnering and collaborating as a consultant with the commission. Um, I do believe, you know, what is his concern or maybe mine is the same or maybe you are thinking differently. The fact is that whatever is the product of the consultant, um, the city council is going to hold both the commissioners, the commission, and the staff responsible for it. So because we are going to be the ones for the choice of the selecting group and, and for what is being uh, the performance, that's why that collaboration should be not only, or whatever it's going to be used, should be not only a word, but it should be a function that should be maintained in whatever is being decided. That's how I see it. Other thing, Ms. Commissioner Lee. As I, as I recall, the city council asks us to work more on policy than versus running functions, because technically we're running these functions. By doing a collaboration or a partnership, we're, not, we're indirectly running it, we're funding it versus running it. Are you talking yourself out of your recommendation? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, along the same lines. It's along no, the no, same lines. It's okay. just okay. the opposite from the opposite. what I understand, correct? I just heard you. I, I, what I just heard was that if we're focusing more on it being a partnership or collaboration, then we are then becoming a co-programmer as opposed to a sponsor of a program, which is our role. Correct. More, which, of, a, more of a sponsorship part. But in, in that same essence, being the sponsor, a collaboration is still, a, a sponsor can be in collaboration, not straight donations or no. well, it's all It's all frankly semantics. I mean, I think we've been pretty um, clear about what, what the intention of the program is, what the role of the commission is. Uh, we were just looking, one of uh, the next uh, RFP says assist in the event management for this. I think what we can say, um, uh, the accepting proposals from qualified art installation consultant teams to assist in the management of. Um, assisting means that they're working for the commission with staff to be able to produce that. So I can add that word and then uh, we can continue to, and then we can keep the language as is because then it means that uh, that they're working with us. Good job, Comfortable with that? I'm, I'm oh, seeing nodding good. heads. I think we're in consensus. Oh, that okay. sounds good. Very good. Thank you. Other uh, comments on the, the content of what we're approving? Uh, I will make a motion Thank you. to approve with second. the change in language. And we I have second. That. Roll call. Commissioner Sterhovanesian? Yes. Ivanian? Yes. Lee? Yes. Chair Eakins absent. Chairperson Deaver. Yes. Next item. 5A3, review and approve event management RFP. Okay, so the last um, item for you to look at tonight um, is um, to retain an event management um, firm to help the city uh, research, uh, develop, and plan a signature art event. Um, this is something that uh, uh, both the commission and the council is very excited about, um, is to bring some sort of a, a, a cultural and arts-related uh, event um, and help build it into something that can, um, you know, happen on an annual basis. Again, the goal would be to create some sort of, uh, to create a cultural destination for the city, residents and visitors. Um, I think it was important for the council that we, we help continue brand Glendale's Art and Entertainment District and a commission um, funded program or an event would be able to do that. Uh, the budget for this um, is 50,000, so the event management um, firm would, would really have to, to make that uh, uh, stretch out uh, for a, a 
to do to cover a lot of responsibilities um, they will be responsible for event marketing um, that's a very very important part of developing a signature art event um, retaining event talent so whether it's uh, finding artists or musicians or performers to be able to do that, they're going to be responsible for not only finding that talent but securing them negotiating the fees for it um, also event research and development is key um, is to identify the right time of year uh, to be able to plan this event where it's not going to interfere with other events that are happening in the city or in the region to, de to develop a theme, a concept that's unique to Glendale that fits into uh, to, the, to the city's goal and something that our residents will be proud of to attend, but also to attract um, visitors from throughout Los Angeles. And then, of course, the most important part is management. Um, there's a lot of um, logistics. You know, the RFP spells out, I think, 15 different um, items that they'll need to look at through like uh, securing insurance to making sure that there's um, you know um, evacuation um, you know avenues to um, porta potties and all those things and this is something that an event management firm will be able to do um, including ge general event oversight as coordinating with residents um, businesses to make sure that um, there's that ongoing communication um, something else that we're requiring the event management firm or encouraging them to do is to, to develop event sponsorship and fundraising so although the city is um, is um, budgeting fifty thousand dollars the consultant is encouraged to go find whether it's in kind or monetary sponsors to be able to increase that budget to develop a larger, much larger event. And that's something that the um that we can uh, discuss further with a consultant is uh, when we're uh, finalizing that agreement is you know how much does this the city retain to be able to help pay for um, future years events but the idea is to bring in the right firm uh, to do the right work so that they we don't make this a one-time event that doesn't go anywhere it's really to develop a great event that can grow every year um, the uh, re review and evaluation of the proposals is consistent with um, the other two that you just saw. It's, again, we're looking for a top-notch firm that's done this before. They've been successful at it. They know what they're doing. They know how to work with the community. They understand how to outreach um, to our local businesses, um, to residents, as well as um, local artists and performers. But they understand things on a global perspective. They can develop and do that research, which is really important, and that they also know how to promote that uh, the event and um, and and get the word out there. Uh, and we're looking for quality submit those people who understand again uh, what we're expecting of them to do um, to make sure that uh, they um, are creative in their proposal and their narrative that they're just not going to give us something that they've submitted to every other city um, we want something unique to Glendale we are all excited I think everyone's been waiting for something like this in our community we definitely want to get uh, a unique proposal and something that's creative and exciting um, and uh, that's a quick overview. Um, again, uh, if you um, have any changes, I'm happy to incorporate them. If not, I recommend that you approve the scope of work and the draft RFP. Commissioner Kavanian. I will move uh, the approval for the event management firm RFP. And I'll second it. Roll call. Commissioner Serhovanesian. Yes. Kavanian. Yes. Lee. Yes. Rikens absent. Chairperson Dewar. Yes. Next item. Item six, commission staff comments. <clears throat> oh, I can, <laughs> I can start very <laughs> quickly. Uh, so last meeting I was uh, absent, and uh, in case you were all wondering, I was on the East Coast looking for grad schools. I will probably be going to Connecticut as of uh, next fall. Uh, yeah. I have not quite decided where, but uh, Yale is one of my options, and University of Hartford. But I'm leaning to University of Hartford. So that's all I wanted to say. That's why I wasn't here last time. Very exciting. A lot of fun. Other comments? Um, just you know, a little thing. There are different activities and functions that I've participated, but what highlights was the uh, brand Associates event, which was called uh, Glendale uh, Collects, which was at the house of uh, Jean Simon. Uh, it was phenomenal. It was a fundraiser, um, and uh, the event was so classy. It was so beautiful, so artful, so inspiring that 
uh, I was talking to my colleagues about it, and I said that, you know, it's still, it is in my, I close my eyes, I see the house, I see the candles, I see the artwork, I hear the music, and the wonderful conversation of the wonderful people who were there to support the event. And there are many people who came there that night. So, again, thank you to Glendale Arts, um, sorry, to the brand associates uh, for the wonderful function that they put together. So since uh, Terry Deaver, our chair, is also the vice president of the group, I wanted to uh, extend my gratitude for the wonderful work and the wonderful function that was put together. Thank you. Staff, um, the, the only thing I'm going to, I will add is just as a reminder that the Glendale Youth Alliance Art Exhibit Fundraiser is a, a, happening on November 7th, Thursday, at the Glendale Forest Lawn Museum. And with that, next item. Item seven, written communications. And we have none that I'm aware of. Next, oh, and we are then therefore adjourned. Happy Halloween to everybody. Enjoy the evening. <laughs> Happy and safe Halloween. <laughs>